So up to this point so far, we have been discussing single differential equations containing one unknown function. But often in theory, as well as in many applications, we must deal with systems of differential equations. So what's that? Well, a system of ordinary differential equations is two or more equations involving the derivatives of two or more unknown functions of a single independent variable. So recall the word ordinary here, referring to the fact that no matter how many unknown functions we have, or how many dependent variables we're working with, there's only one single independent variable. So they're all functions of x, or they're all functions of t, okay? If we are dealing with more than one independent variable, then we consider that a partial differential equation or a system of partial differential equations, and we will not be dealing with that in this course, of course. So uh, what would be an example of a system of ordinary differential equations? Well, let's see. Say some unknown function x of t, its derivative is equal to 4x plus 7 times some unknown function y of t. And at the same time, the derivative of y is equal to the unknown function x minus 2 times the unknown function y. So the solution here to this differential equation would be a set of differentiable functions, x and y, and they're both functions of t. And they would both have to also share a common interval of definition. All right, so let's take a look at a real example and come up with an approach for solving such a system. Okay, so here we have a system of differential equations, and of course we want to solve it. Now solving a system of linear differential equations is in many ways going to feel a lot like solving a system of linear equations from algebra uh, by the elimination method. Okay, because that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. But we're obviously going to be tying that in with the theory of solving differential equations because that's, that's what we're really doing here. So, yeah, let's get into this. Uh, the first thing to note is that x and y are functions, right? This is not y is a function of x. x and y are independent functions, and their independent variable is t. And our final answer is going to be like, you know, x of t is equal to stuff involving t, and y of t will equal stuff involving t. And it's that pair of solutions that will be the, that will represent the solutions to the system. Okay, so what is an approach that works? Well, we're going to see several approaches this semester. Um, we're going to see an approach, obviously, in this section, and then again in chapter 8, which is even more robust. But for this situation, what we're going to do is write everything in differential notation. So that's using the capital D that we saw at the beginning of this chapter. Uh, that will help us with the algebraic portion of solving the, this system. Okay, so instead of dx dt, we will just say that's capital D times x, and that's equal to y. And instead of dy dt, we'll say that's capital D times y. It's not really times, so it's not really a good idea for me to say times. It's an operator, right? So this is capital D being applied to Y and capital D being applied to X. Okay, the next thing we want to do is move all the terms that have the dependent variable to the left-hand side. You also ought to, although you don't have to, but you range the dependent variables in columns. So we have dx and then we're subtracting y and that equals 0. And what I mean by arrange the columns by variable is that this column here will be the x column. 
So instead of writing dy minus 3x, let's line up the x's. So we have negative 3x plus dy equals 0. So not only will writing it this way help us with the elimination stage, which is coming up, but when we get to chapter 8 and we solve these using matrices, lining up the columns this way will help us put it in a matrix. Okay, so now in turn we need to eliminate both x and y. So I usually eliminate y first and then x second, because when we eliminate y, that means we're actually going to solve for x first, which is, you know, the first function, and then um, when we eventually eliminate x, then we'll be solving for y at that point. But you can do it in whatever order you want. Okay, so to eliminate y, we can see that if we apply the big D operator to the first equation, then we'll have negative dy. And of course, then when we add the equations, we're going to get the y's canceling, and we're just going to be left with a differential equation involving x, which is perfect. So we will multiply equation 1 by d. So we're going to have d squared x, which really means the second derivative of x, minus dy is equal to the derivative of 0, which is 0. And we're going to leave this equation alone. So now you can add the equations, and you're going to get d squared minus 3x is equal to 0, because the dy's will cancel. So now we have a single differential equation in x. So solve it. OK, well, this is homogeneous. And we can see its auxiliary equation right away, which would be m cubed minus 3 equals 0. If you can't see that that auxiliary equation emerges here, uh, let's just write this non-differentiable form. This is really d squared uh, x minus 3x equals 0, which just means second derivative of x, right? So x double prime minus 3x equals 0. And of course, that would give us this auxiliary equation of m squared minus 3 equals 0. So a nice thing about the big D notation is that the auxiliary equation is evident when you have uh, the, the d's all factored out like that. OK, so if we solve this, we're going to get m is plus or minus the square root of 3. So we can deduce that the solution for x will be c1 e to the rad 3t plus c2 e to the negative rad 3t. And all the nuanced rules from the earlier sections of this chapter do apply here, right? This is a pretty straightforward case of an auxiliary equation, a homogeneous differential equation, so there's not a lot going on here, and that would be our x solution. Okay, so let's leave that alone. And we're going to go back to the system in differential notation here. And now instead of eliminating y, let's eliminate x. OK, so I've pasted in the system here as we, as we left it. And now what are we going to do? Well, to eliminate x, we should multiply the first equation by 3, and we should apply the big D operator to the second equation. So this would give us 3dx minus 3y equals 3 times 0 is 0. And negative 3dx plus d squared y is equal to 0. So of course, now adding the equations we're going to get negative 3y plus d squared y is equal to 0. Or you could see this is d squared minus 3 
y equals zero. So again, we have a single differential equation, uh, this time in the y variable. And you may recognize that this is structured very similarly to, almost identically in fact, to the case when we had an x variable here, uh, which means this will have the same auxiliary equation and basically the same form as its answer. And yeah, that's actually gonna happen quite a bit. It's often going to happen. So the auxiliary equation is m squared minus three equals zero, which gives us plus or minus rad three. Okay, so this tells us that y is equal to, now we cannot use c1 and c2 because this is part of the same problem, right? Well, th those constants are taken, and they're not necessarily the same constants. So we need to go to c3 and c4 for a moment. So we're gonna go c3 e to the rad 3t plus c4 e to the negative rad 3t. Okay. So yeah, we have a solution for x, we have a solution for y. So it would seem like we're finished the problem, but we're actually not, so we're almost done. We need to do one more thing, but let's write down the solution so far. So while we do have the structure of our set of solutions worked out, uh, we actually aren't being specific enough we only need C1 and C2, and in fact, C3 and C4 need to be written in terms of C1 and C2, right? Once you choose a specific X function, you don't get to just choose whatever Y function you want. Y has to fall in line with whatever you've chosen for X, or vice versa. Okay, these are pairs of functions that work together. So how can we determine C3 and C4 in terms of C1 and C2? Well, the way to do that is by consulting the original system of equations and plugging in your solutions with the C1, C2, C3s, and C4s where they belong, and then matching coefficients. So yeah, let's just pick this one here. Okay, so we're gonna need the derivative of our x and we're gonna set it equal to our y. So we can see that the derivative of our x is radical three c1 e to the rad three t minus radical three c2 e to the ra uh, negative rad three t. And now we're going to equate this with y, which is the right-hand side of this equation in the original system, and y is c3 e to the rad 3t plus c4 e to the negative rad 3t. Okay, so matching coefficients, we can see that c3, which is the coefficient of this term here, uh, must equal rad 3 c1, and c4 must equal negative rad three C2. All right, so now we are finally able to present our final answer and it'll only be in terms of C1 and C2. All right, so this is where we left off and now we just need to replace C3 and C4 with the, what we figured out. So here's our final answer. X, well, we had that one figured out a while ago. He's just sitting there patiently waiting. And now Y is C3, which is rad three C1, and plus C4, which is minus rad three C2. And there's our final answer to the system. So again, this is a family of pairs of solutions, right? So you could let, for instance, uh, if you let x equal 
zero, in fact, which would be just all of the constants being zero, then y in turn would have to be zero. And you can see that x and y both being zero would actually satisfy this system. So that's very interesting. But for instance, if you chose the solution, you know, for x, x equals five e to the rad three t minus e to the negative rad three t, so c1 is five and c2 is negative one, then you're forced to match that with this other function, which would be five root three e to the rad three t, and then plus rad three, because c2 is negative one, e to the negative rad three t. And so this particular specific pair of functions satisfies that system. All right, so let's solve this particular system of differential equations here. So first things first, we will write this using the big D notation and move everything to the left-hand side. Okay, so with this first equation, we have dx minus 4x, so we can write this as d minus 4x, and we also move that 7y over, giving us this. And for the second equation, the x moves over, giving us negative x, and then we have dy and plus 2y, so we'll write that as d plus 2 of y equals zero. Okay, very good. So now we're going to proceed to eliminate the variables one at a time and first solve each differential equation in single variable. And of course, once we've done that, we're gonna have a number of constants and in one of the equations, the constants will be redundant. So we'll determine like we did last time what those constants are in terms of the other constants. So, yeah, but that's for later. So right now we'll eliminate uh, the variables. So again, uh, I will start by eliminating y to give us an x solution in terms of c1 and c2. Okay, so in order to eliminate the y variable, we ought to multiply the first equation by d plus two and the second equation by seven so that in both cases we have a seven times d plus two, but with of course opposite signs. So we're going to get d plus two applied to zero would be zero. And in the second equation, we're multiplying everything by seven. Okay, and of course if we add, then the y terms will cancel and we're just gonna get a differential equation in involving x in big D notation. So let's clean up the differential factor here um, and that'll tell us what our auxiliary equation is going to be. Okay, so here's our differential equation in a single dependent variable x. And of course, if we were to write this in kind of the classic way, we would know it would look more like this. So that's how you would interpret it if you wanted to solve it from scratch, but written this way in differential form, we can very clearly see its auxiliary equation. So this factors. So the solution for x is that x of t would be c1 e to the negative 3t plus c2 e to the 5t. Okay, very good. Let's leave that alone. And now we will go back to the system of differential equations written in the big D notation, and we will eliminate x now. So here's the system where we left off. And to eliminate x, what we ought to do is simply apply d minus four to the second equation. That'll work. 
then we'll add them together. So doing so, we would get this. And adding vertically, of course, we can see the x's eliminate. And we're going to get the following. So once again, we have the same pattern of differentials being applied to y that actually were being applied to x earlier. OK, so if we FOIL out these binomials here and subtract 7, we're actually going to get the same thing we had earlier, d squared minus 2d minus 15. And once again, you don't always get exactly the same auxiliary equation. Uh, you often do, and often you get a similar one with maybe one factor missing or added in. So it is a good idea to always go and eliminate both variables independently the way we are. So we get this auxiliary equation, which should be familiar to you, and gives us the same pair of solutions. So we can get y equal c3 e to the negative 3t plus c4 e to the 5t. All right, so we now have our x and our y, and we just need to, once again, consult the system of equations, the original system of equations, uh, and plug in our x and y as we have them and, and their derivatives as needed in order to match the coefficients to determine what c3 and c4 are in terms of c1 and c2. Okay, so here are the x and y so far as we have them. Okay. And here's the original system of equations. So yeah, let's just pick one of them and plug stuff in. And I say we go with the second one just because the numbers are, you know, slightly better. So yeah, let's use that one. So we're going to need dy dt, and we can see that that's negative 3, c3, 5, c4, and let's also calculate now x minus 2y. Okay. And according to this equation from the original system, dy dt must equal x minus 2y. So we can match the coefficients in both cases, and yay, we're going to get an actual formula for c3 and c4 in terms of c1 and c2. So negative 3c3, which is the coefficient of e to the negative 3 up here is equal to c1 minus 2c3, which is the coefficient of e to the negative 3t on the, in the second. So let's solve for c3. So we get c3 is negative c1. OK, and for the e to the 5t coefficients, we have 5c4 is equal to c2 minus 2c4. So again, solving for C4, we'll add it to the other side. So C4 is equal to 1 seventh of C2. Okay, so finally, we can present our final answer here. And everything will be in terms of, of just two parameters, C1 and C2. So X is going to be, of course, what it was c1 e to the negative 3t plus c2 e to the 5t. And y is going to be, now instead of c3, we'll write negative c1 e to the negative 3t. And instead of c4, we're going to write plus 1 7th c2 e to the 5t. And there we are. It's your final answer. Now, it's possible 
that if you had eliminated, say, x first and solved for y first, and then eliminated y second and therefore solved for x second, that you would be naming your constant something slightly different. And in which case, your y might be kind of the anchor function, and your y would be like c1 times stuff plus c2 times stuff, and then your x would be the one that's written in terms of that. So in this case, our x would be negative c1 e to the negative 3t plus 7c2 e to the 5t, right? I mean, this coefficient has to be seven times more than this coefficient, regardless of whatever you call them. So just keep that in mind when you're going through the homework and checking your solution against whatever the book has, because the book may have made a different decision than you. What I can say, having gone through this and looked at what the book does, the book tends to assign the variables sort of by default to the x function, and then everything else kind of just depends on whatever the x function is doing. And it's for that reason that I specifically eliminate y first in order to produce that x equation first. So it's entirely up to you. There's no code that says that x has to have the main constants. Okay, so this is our first system uh, today that's not autonomous, meaning we actually have an appearance of the independent variable t right here, e to the t. So let's see how that affects the way we work this out. So first thing we ought to do is write this in the differential notation. And we're also going to move all the terms with the dependent variable to the left-hand side. So this time the e to the t is going to stay where it is. Uh, so we will not just have 0 on the right. OK, so we're going to have, uh, looks like we have dx plus dy equals e to the t. And for the second equation, uh, we're going to add x over to the other side. So we're going to have negative d squared plus d plus 1. And that's all the coefficient of x. And then, of course, that little y is coming over as well. So we get plus y is equal to 0. Um, incidentally, if there were like actual constants as well, like plus 3, uh, that constant would stay on the right-hand side too. So again, it's only terms with the dependent variable that make their way over to the left-hand side. So given the shape of this thing, we can probably move it so that the x's and the y's are lined up to some extent. There we go. Okay, so yeah, let's eliminate uh, y. That shouldn't be too hard. And then we're going to get an equation involving only x. So of course we can do that by multiplying the second equation by negative d and then adding the two equations. So adding the equations will eliminate that dy's and so we're just going to get a bunch of stuff involving d and x, right? So specifically, uh, we're going to get dx and then minus d times this stuff. And that's equal to e to the t plus 0, which is e to the t. So, uh, OK, of course, we can factor all that d stuff out of the x. So we'll just have a bunch of d stuff and then x. And let's figure out what that polynomial is in d's. OK, so it looks like we're just going to get d cubed minus d squared x is equal to e to the t. So again, written not in differential notation, this would be like x triple prime minus x double prime is equal to e to the t. OK, well, this is not a homogeneous differential equation, right? So we actually have fallen into like 4.4 at this point, where we need to solve it using the method of undetermined coefficients because that right-hand side is not 0. So of course, you know, en route to solving it in that sense, uh, we do pretend for a moment that it is a homogeneous equation, extract that auxiliary equation, solve it, and get our complementary solution and then we have to figure out the particular solution. So you can start to see all these little branches that we have to take 
that we eventually have to roll back to get to the main solution to the whole system. So these problems can be a little involved sometimes. So we're changing the right-hand side to a zero so that we can solve the associated homogeneous differential equation. And for that, we're going to get our auxiliary, which is m cubed minus m squared is equal to zero at this guy factors. And we're going to get m equals zero with multiplicity two, and then m equals one. So our complementary solution for x, remember we're solving this for x, uh, is c1 e to the 0t, so that would just be c1, plus c2t e to the 0t, so that's c2t, plus c3 e to the 1t. Okay, so... Yeah, uh, we're not done because we now need to find the particular solution and you can use variation of parameters, but uh, this one's easier probably just to use undetermined coefficients. Okay, so let's build our trial solution uh, out of the form of the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is simply e to the t. So you know, the knee-jerk reaction would be to set our trial solution to be a e to the t, uh, but this would be a duplication of a term that's already in the complementary solution. So, okay, we will go with a t e to the t. And we'll take as many derivatives as needed. Actually, we're going to need three derivatives here. So xp prime will be a e to the t plus a t e to the t. xp double prime will be a e to the t plus uh, another one of those plus a t e to the t. So let's write 2 a e to the t plus a t e to the t. And xp triple prime is 2a e to the t plus, and then by the product rule again, another a e to the t. So let's just write it as 3a e to the t plus a t e to the t. Okay, so now we'll substitute these pieces into the differential equation. So we're solving x triple prime minus x double prime is equal to e to the t. So plugging in those pieces for x triple prime, we're going to have 3a e to the t plus a t e to the t minus x double prime, which is 2a e to the t plus a t e to the t. And we're setting that equal to e to the t. And again, our job is just to match coefficients to figure out what capital A is. So hopefully nice things happen. Uh, we can see that if we... 3a minus 2a is just a. And actually this guy and this guy cancel. So a e to the t is equal to e to the t. A uh, little anticlimactic, but there it is. a is equal to 1. So our particular solution here, which was the form a t e to the t, is actually just 1 times t e to the t. And so therefore, x, which is x complement plus x particular, is going to be what we got for the complementary solution, which was c1 plus c2t plus c3 e to the t, and then plus the particular solution, t e to the t. So there is our x answer. And now we have to go and do all this for y. So here's the system as we left it. 
and this time we're going to eliminate x. Okay, so yeah, let's multiply uh, this equation up here by all of that nonsense, and then we'll multiply the equation on the bottom by negative d. So on top we're going to get this. Don't forget to hit the right hand side with the thing that you're multiplying everything by. So we're going to have to take some derivatives of e to the t. That's always a challenge. And on the bottom we're going to multiply everything by negative d. Oh well, negative d times zero, that'll still be zero. Okay, so now we'll just add. And of course, the, the x terms will cancel, uh, but the y terms aren't particularly delicious looking. Let's see what we get. So we have... Okay, so the second derivative of e to the t uh, is e to the t, so this is negative e to the t, plus the first derivative of e to the t is e to the t, and then one times e to the t, so, okay. So we still get e to the t on the right. And on the left, we're going to get what? Negative d cubed plus d squared y. OK, I think this is a situation where we should just burden the right-hand side with being negative. So this is going to give us uh, d cubed minus d squared y equals negative e to the t. And we can see that we're going to get the same form of the complementary solution for y that we got for x, because this is obviously a form that will yield the same auxiliary equation. So we can arrive at least at our complementary solution for y here, which is going to be c4 plus c5t plus c6 e to the t. However, because we have a different right-hand side to this differential equation, we should figure out a complementary solution, again, using undetermined coefficients. So our trial yp is, again, we would sort of want it to be e a to the t, except we, we can't because that's already exhibited in our complementary solution. So once again, we have to go a t e to the t. And we're going to get the same pattern of derivatives that we got earlier. And plugging those into the differential equation is going to give us a form here. Okay, so as before, these guys are going to cancel. I mean, this is the same left-hand side as before. So we have a e to the t is equal to negative e to the t. And this tells us, matching coefficients, that a will be negative 1 in this situation. So therefore, our particular solution here will be negative t e to the t. And therefore, y, which is, of course, the complementary solution plus the particular solution, is going to be c4 plus c5t plus c6 e to the t and then negative t e to the t. So we have our x and we have our y and the last stage of this problem is to write our x and y together but using only the three constants from x, right? The constants from y should depend on the constants from x. Okay, so here's our original system pasted in. And let's see if we can use just the first equation because that seems to be pretty straightforward. So we're going to need dx dt. Well, let's quickly write down where we left off with our x's and y's. So there's where we left off, and we can deduce that dx dt is c2 
plus c3 e to the t plus e to the t plus t e to the t and dy dt is c5 plus c6 e to the t minus e to the t minus t e to the t and if we add these together we're supposed to just get e to the t according to the original system okay so yeah let's do that so these are pretty big expressions so let's just add vertically so of course we're going to get uh, c2 plus c5 plus c3 plus c6 coefficients of e to the t and actually all that other stuff's going to cancel and so this is supposed to equal on the right hand side e to the t ah great matching coefficients we can see that c2 plus c5 must equal zero so c5 is negative c2 and c3 plus c6 is the coefficient of e to the t so that would be one and therefore c6 is one minus c3 okay but what about c4 well unfortunately we're not going to get c4 because taking the derivative of y we lose that information so to find c4 we're going to have to use one of the original equations that doesn't involve a derivative of y that would be of course this clunky thing here so okay we're gonna need one more derivative of x in order to pull this off okay so here's the second equation and of course we're gonna need the second derivative of x so let's quickly find that so that's gonna be c3 e to the t plus now 2 e to the t plus t e to the t okay so now let's work out the left hand side of that equation so that would be negative of this second derivative here plus the first derivative of x and what are we going to get doing that so of course that would be negative of this and we're adding the first derivative of x So we're going to get some cancellation here. These guys are going to cancel. And also these guys are going to cancel. So we're going to have, looks like, let's go with C2 and then minus E to the T. So meanwhile, the right-hand side of that equation, which is negative X, negative Y, is going to match up with that. Let's see what negative x minus y is. So negative x would be negative c1 minus c2t minus c3 e to the t and then minus t e to the t and subtracting y from that is going to be minus c4 minus c5t minus c6 e to the t and then plus t e to the t okay but wait remember c5 is really negative c2 and c6 is really 1 minus c3 Okay, so this is going to create some more cancellations, like these guys are going to cancel, and these guys are going to cancel. So what do we have here? We have negative c1 minus c3 e to the t minus c4, and then minus e to the t plus c3 e to the t. Okay, those guys cancel. So we have minus C1, minus C4, minus E to the T. All right. Now this expression is apparently equal to this expression according to this equation here. 
which means that we can see finally what C4 is in terms of C1 and C2. So C4 is equal to negative C1 minus C2. And finally, we can go to our final answer. So our x was C1 plus C2t plus C3 e to the t plus t e to the t. And our y was C4. Uh, C4 is negative C1 minus C2. plus C5, uh, but C5 was negative C2. Plus C6, which was one minus C3, e to the t, and then finally minus t, e to the t. And there is our general solution. Okay, that's, I'm done.